Okay, quad owners. This is a, I'm not sure what year this is, but it's a, it's a Yamaha Grizzly. It's a 600, uh, four-wheel drive. Customer uh, complaining that it wasn't running right. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty beat up. I mean, the guy didn't really care for it too, too well. I think it's been uh, outside most of its life. But uh, the complaint was, uh, uh, just was running poorly. And he'd fill it up with gas, and by the next morning, he'd have a puddle of gas uh, uh, on the garage floor. Um, uh, he took it apart and tried to fix it himself, um, and he still couldn't get it to stop leaking. So where it was leaking from was the, uh, if you look underneath, and this happens all the time to these quads, so maybe this will help somebody out. You can see there's a little bit of gas on the floor there, and it was uh, coming on the overflow from the uh, carburetor, uh, so that... Uh, uh, the float needle was pro most likely sticking, okay? Um, so what you got to do, I didn't take a whole video of how to get that out because every quad's a little different, but the gist of it is uh, you got to take the air box out that sits in here so that you have access. And when I opened this air box up, it was totally full of, um, uh, had like a mouse nest in it and it was... Uh, contaminated with, a, it was an oil gas mixture, so uh, it was really flooding out pretty good. Okay, so I, I cleaned all that out, and you got to take some shift cables out, uh, and some other stuff. Every quad's a little different, but the one thing that is the same uh, is most of these carburetors. Uh, they use a, a Makuni carburetor, most of them, so I'm going to show you how to take that apart and fix that, uh, uh, that uh, sticking needle, uh, so that you'll stop your gas leak and she'll run right again. Okay, the first thing you gotta do once you get this thing out is you gotta, you know, clean it up. So you're gonna get some carb cleaner, okay? Any old carb cleaner will do. Squirt the whole thing down and get all the grease and everything off of before you open it up because you don't want any of that uh, dirt or anything getting into the carburetor because you're just gonna make your job harder. So clean this up as best you can before you start opening it up. Now, this guy is already, he took this apart at one point. Um, and I don't know if you can see on the camera here, the adjustment screw, which sits right here for the idle mixture, he has stripped that out, I can see. Uh, it's only brass, so it's real easy to do. Um, if you crank down just once on it with, that, uh, with the screwdriver, you're going to strip that out. So we're going to have to try to overcome that, and I'll show you how we're going to try to do that later on uh, so that he doesn't have to get a whole new carburetor. Um, but the first thing you need to do, you can leave the, uh, the intake boot on and everything. You don't need to take that off. The uh, uh, throttle, throttle assembly can stay on. The plate had to come off in order to get the uh, linkage off. Um, but this is, this is as much as you've got to tear it down to get it on the bench here. Okay? So the first thing you've got to do is uh, take that bowl off. Now these screws on the bowl, there's two of them. Okay? They're always tight. Um, they're very hard to get out sometimes, and if you start really uh, cranking down on it, you're going to strip them. So the best way to get them off, these are tight. I tried. So uh, before I strip them out and have to like dremel them out and, and tap them or whatever, um, I found that this method works almost every time, and I'll, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, to get those to get those bowl screws out, the easiest way to do that without stripping them. Uh, the heads on those uh, Phillips uh, screws are is a is an impact driver. Um, it makes the job a lot easier. Um, it, you can buy it in a set. Comes with a bunch of different bits. You just buy. You just get the bit that you need that fits just right in there. Okay, and then that's inserted into the uh, the impact driver like that, and it turns. Okay, so you're going to want to loosen lefty loosey. So that just gets inserted in there like that. And you put some downward force and turn it to the left. And then when you hit it with the hammer, it loosens them right up. It gives you more force than you can ever get using just a, just a screwdriver. A couple wraps and they loosen right up almost every time and you don't, you don't strip those screws out. There's two of them. I usually just go right to this because when you, when you strip those screws out, it's just a pain trying to get them out. 
and there you have it. So if you can get that out, you're pretty much home free. Okay, and that bowl will come right up, right out of there. You can you can put that on your bench when you do it, but I think it's easier to clamp it in the vise. Keep all your screws together. Put them in a line them all up, and if you're not really sure, take a picture. I've taken too many of these apart. I don't need a picture anymore, but if you're not sure, take a picture as soon as you start taking everything out and lay it. Lay it out the way you take it out and put it right back in the reverse order. Okay? So, when you pull this out, the float, the whole float assembly, and the needle which sits right in there is all going to come out together. Okay? Put that aside. Okay, and then you're going to see all the, all the pieces in here. I'll show you that that have to come out in order to uh, repair it. Now, I I had beforehand before I started this, I ordered the uh, the rebuild kit. Okay, um, this is the company I use. Okay, they seem to be the cheapest. You can get them on Amazon. Um, I find that through Amazon, it's e it's even cheaper than what I can get it through the distributor. So, um, you just uh, look up your model. Um, but it's helpful that if you're not sure, take it apart first because then you can t lay out the pieces because all the gaskets on these, uh, they're slight variances, so you're going to want to make sure you get the right one before you, before you start. Um, and then you just, uh, you're going to want to clean the inside of this out with, with carb cleaner, um, which I'll do now. And then uh, I'll show you how you take out all the, uh, the internals and replace it with the new. Okay, so I cleaned out the inside here. You don't want to go too aggressive with cleaning it yet. Uh, you just want to get all the uh, any debris that's inside there. And there was there was quite a bit in there. Um, kind of looked like rusted. It was contaminated. Had some water in it. Um, and I'll show you why. You don't you don't really want to squirt it too much into these ports just yet. And I'll show you why. Okay. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you got to take the diaphragm off here. These screws were loose. Again, you might have to go the the impact driver route, if you can't get them off, then, uh, I might have to here, I don't know. Yep, so when they're that tight, oh, that one wasn't. And if you're not sure, take a picture. Okay. So that diaph there's a diaphragm that sits underneath here. And the reason why you don't want to go too crazy with that carb cleaner yet is because if you get carb cleaner on that diaphragm, it's going to eat it right up. And then you're going to have to get a diaphragm. Usually the diaphragms don't go bad. Okay, and everything just, you'll see, there's, it pulls out, there's a spring. Okay, that operates the throttle there, or the, in the throat there. Put everything aside. And this is the diaphragm I was talking about. That just lifts out pretty delicate so you got to be careful and you need to look at it make sure it's not there's no cuts or anything in it if you get carb cleaner on that it'll it'll harden right up so you, you don't want to get the carb cleaner on that okay uh, and you're gonna just put all your parts aside for the moment okay and inside here this is probably about the, the trickiest part here if you haven't done it before that has to come out in order to get the the metering rod out there okay so you got to take the first jet out. It's slotted. It's brass. They do. There's a special screwdriver for doing it. It's it's got a very squared off tip. If you use a regular screwdriver, they're more tapered. It tends to uh, strip that out. Now this one's not too bad because it's exposed, but some of these are recessed inside. And if you don't use a square, very square tip screwdriver. Um, there's a good chance you're going to strip that brass, okay? But this one, this one is not, so. You're going to take them out and put all your old parts aside. Cap. Okay. And what you got to do here, this is actually inserted, the metering rod there, from this side. That's why the diaphragm has to come out. Okay, they get stuck in there. It should tap out. Okay, if it doesn't, 
you've got to get a punch about the same size and carefully punch it out and it'll fall out the bottom. There's this plastic insert that comes out with it. And you'll see how it rides in there. So it comes out as, a, as an assembly like that. And there's the rod that you're going to replace. Okay? The plastic is reused. You just clean that up. Okay? And that just gets it's a tight fit. Basically, it's like putting a puzzle together. I can't emphasize taking pictures if you're not sure how, how you're taking it apart or, or video it so that you can go back and see where everything went because there's a lot of pieces that come out. Okay, put everything aside. This here, you can see it. This piece right here, that's where the uh, needle from the float sits. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, that assembly sits in here upside down like this. Up the needle file. Okay, that goes in here like this. It's pressed in here. Okay, and as the float, the float comes up like that, it closes off the needle. Okay. The problem with this carburetor is this wasn't sealing, so as soon as he was putting gas in it, it was just leaking through the float and then out into the crankcase and out onto the floor. Okay, so when you get a rebuild kit, it's going to come with those parts to replace, and that just pulls out, and you can, I don't know if it shows up on camera, that one's corroded in the inside, you can, can't see on the camera, but when you look at it, it's, um, it's pitted, so that's why that needle wasn't sealing properly. So the kit comes with all new parts for that. Okay, And at this point, you got one more jet that sits down in here. Okay, That one's recessed, and that one strips out real easy. It's a very small screw. You, you need these little tiny screwdrivers. They're called, uh, I think they call them jeweler's screwdrivers. And they will fit right down into that little, little jet. And they're tight. If you can't get it out, you got to maybe spray some WD-40 in there. Okay, and you loosen that up. And then it should should just drop out when you turn it upside down and there it is okay and you can see that hole is like the size of a pin and it only takes just a little bit of uh, dirt in there and, and it's just not going to run right so um, the kit comes with all, all new ones you can clean them but I, I find it's just better just to replace them after that I have you got to deal with that adjustment, the idle adjustment screw, which is stripped out. So in order to get that out, we're going to have to do some type of workaround to, to try to fix that. Now because of the way that the bowl sits on here, okay, bowl sits like that, so that screw isn't covered by the bowl or anything. So this, this extra material in there it's really not needed. It's recessed, so what we're going to have to do is probably dremel that out and put another slot in there and attempt to take that brass out. Um, otherwise, there's going to be no way to adjust the idle on this thing. So I'll show you how we're going to do that.